today's topic, we're going to call it the Unholy Roman Catholic Church. The Unholy Roman Catholic Church. As we know, that's a big church. They're based throughout all the whole world, and they call themselves the Holy Roman Catholic Church. But according to Scripture, you're going to realize that they are very unholy. So let's start with um, Romans chapter 7, verse 12. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So the scripture tells you, wherefore the law is holy, right? Yes. So when you call your church the holy Roman Catholic church, that means that church, for you to be holy, you must be applying what? The laws. Because it says, for the law is holy. Now what law do these people apply? Not a damn thing. Because as we're going to go through the scriptures, you're going to see that they are not holy at all because they don't keep the laws of God. So to be holy, you must be keeping the laws of God, right? Give me Colossians 3, uh, Colossians 2 and 8. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So the Bible gives you a fair warning. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies. What you're going to find out is that a lot of places, a lot of churches, they, they do what? They practice the philosophies of this world, but not the laws of God. So the Bible already gave you a fair warning because the Bible already knew many men would come to try to teach you things that are contrary to the Bible. It says, in vain deceit. After the tradition of men. That's the key word you got to pay attention to. Tradition. Throughout the whole world, you're going to find a lot of tradition. Um, we're not going to go too deep into it. I got the book here, but for sake of time. Like um, this week, we had what? Uh, Ash, uh, Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday. That's a tradition of men. Show me in the Bible where the scripture says to go in front of, in front of a priest and have him dip his, his finger in ashes and make a little cross on your forehead. Where's that at in the Bible? You do not find it. So, where does it come from? Tradition of men. Those are pagan traditions. So the Bible already tells you men were going to come and they were going to try to de uh, fool you with philosophy and vain deceit. So you have to beware. It says, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Throughout the whole Bible, Christ is named. There is no teaching where Christ tells you to put ashes on your forehead. To put a little cross on your forehead with uh, ashes. It doesn't exist. Okay? Give me Titus 1 and 14. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 14. Not giving heed to the Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So we are not supposed to give heed to Jewish fables. Fables that are cloaked with uh, a little bit of um, uh, a biblical storyline, but really it's not of the Bible whatsoever. Because everything that Catholic Church do, they say they do it in honor of Christ, but really, show me where Ash Wednesdays is in the Bible. Show me where Christ spoke about Ash Wednesdays. That's, that's an ancient Babylonian custom. So they say, not giving heed. So we're not supposed to listen to these things, to Jewish fables and commandments of men. Commandments of men, men that institute those things. And it says that turn from the truth. What is the truth? Because it tells you if you follow the commandments of men, you're going to be turned from the truth. So what is the truth that you're going to be turned from? You got that for me? So the truth, the scriptures tell you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you need the truth. So let's see what the truth is according to scriptures. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What is the truth? Thy law is the truth. So the laws, the statutes, the commandments, that's the truth. But if you choose to go and do the commandments of men, what are you doing? The opposite of the commandments of God. So that's how those vain Jewish fables or philosophies of men to deceit, they're going to turn you away from keeping God's laws. Which if you do not keep God's laws in the faith of Christ, you ain't inheriting the kingdom of God. So these men are not leading you to righteousness. They're leading you to your, to your perdition. 
but they are one of the biggest, largest churches in the world. You follow? Let's go to uh, Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15. Uh, verse, uh, let's start at verse 9. Now let's start at verse 2. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 2. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So there was a tradition back then that you have to wash your hand before you eat bread. But the key part I want to uh, hold on is tradition. Because today we have many traditions. Ash Wednesday is one. Christmas is one. Easter is one. Valentine's Day is, a, is another. So there's many traditions, right? That we as Israelites, we don't follow. So the same question can be asked of us today. Why do we don't do these things? We don't follow the tradition of what? Those priests, those pastors that's been set up, that was set up before we came on the scene. People ask, why you don't do these things? The same thing they were asking Christ and his apostles, read. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? You see that? The answer is, okay, I don't follow your tradition, but why do you break God's commandments by your traditions? Because if... If Christ does not speak, or the Bible does not speak about Ash Wednesdays, why do you have it? That's breaking the law. Because you're doing something that is contrary to what God has established. You choose to keep your own holidays as opposed to the holy days of the Most High God. You went about establishing your own righteousness. You are breaking God's laws. And any man who breaks God's law shall not go unpunished. Jump to verse um, 8. Verse 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but the heart is far from me. So, in those churches, you hear people praying, singing, and all that stuff, what? Lip service. But it says they have withdrew their heart far from me. What is the heart of men? Because you might think it's that organ that pumps blood. Oh, I love Jesus with all my heart, and you see people holding their chest. No, that's just the organ that pumps blood. So what, how have you removed your heart far from God? Let's see what the heart is according to the Bible. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. from, from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Stop. From within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. You do not think with this organ right here. You think with this, your brain. So when the scripture, go back to Matthew. When it, the scripture say, you draw near with your mouth, right? But you remove your heart far from God. That means your mind is not on what's written here. Your mind is on the tradition of men. Your Thanksgiving, your Easter's, your, your Christmas. That's what you're about. Following what? The unholy Roman Catholic Church. Which is going to lead you to your death. So it'll, it'll behoove you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Read verse, um, read verse 9. Verse 9. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see that? The Bible says in vain you are worshiping the Most High God because you are teaching the doctrine of men. Not the doctrine that's in the Bible. Let's see what doctrine is. Give me Proverbs 4 and 2. So the doctrines you're supposed to be following is what's written in this book. So by not following what's in this book, you are worshiping in vain because why? You are following the doctrine of men. Let's see what the doctrine you were supposed to follow. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. You see that, people? God said, I gave you good doctrine. There's a good doctrine you're supposed to follow. It says, forsake ye not my laws. Don't forget about my laws. Don't stop doing them. If you continue in them, then you, you, you're going to be all right. But what do we do? We rather follow the tradition of men because of the lust that's within us, okay? Let's, let's uh, give me Matthew 23, uh, verse 9. Because in the Catholic Church, in the unholy Roman Catholic Church, uh, you, people call the priest father, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 9. And call no man your father upon the earth. No. And call no man your father upon the earth. Call no man your father upon the earth. Oh, holy father this, holy father that. You mean holy pedophile this and holy pedophile that? Because that's what's going on in the church. Throughout the whole world, the same news is coming out. But nothing is being done about it. That's the unholy church. Call no man your father. Read. For one is your father, which is in heaven. 
one is your father which is in heaven we don't call no men father so i'm showing you tradition of men that's happening in the church in the unholy roman catholic church that we are not supposed to follow so if you're in those cesspools called churches you come out of them because that's what christ said come out of them my people come out of uh, uh, uh those churches so you don't partake in their sins so give me uh first timothy chapter four we're gonna start at verse one the book of first timothy chapter four verse one now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So from the time Christ came on earth, the end of time has started. And in those days, Christ had already warned us they're going to be evil men that's going to enter the church. So it says, you got to have those spirits that's coming in, uh, that have the seducing spirit and teaching doctrines of devils. Christmas is of the devil. Easter is of the devil. They're not of the Bible. Right? Read. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So these are people that you got, their mind is sealed with a hot iron. They're not changing. They're going to continue in their ways. Read. Forbidding to marry. Uh-oh. Doesn't the Catholic Church forbid their priests to marry? The Bible says it's not good that men should be alone. No wonder you got so many priests raping little boys. By the thousands throughout the whole world. Read. And commanding to abstain from meats. Do, don't they do, um, uh, what's that Friday? Good Friday. Good Friday. They tell you not to eat meat. The Bible is describing you to the T. Because your, 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 your ways are traditions. They're not biblical. Read. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So, of which God had created to receive uh, with thanksgiving of them who believe and who know the truth. When you know the truth, you know you, so you can eat meat. However, there are certain meats you cannot eat. You follow? Verse 4. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good. So, those churches tell you every creature of God is good. You can eat the pork. You can eat whatever. Snake, alligators. You can eat possum, whatever. That's what they say. No. Every creature of God is good. Give me Genesis 125 real quick. So you can understand what the scriptures say. Every script creature is good. Not good to eat. 125, read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So God created those creatures, and he saw that they were good. Good for what? To do their job. Every species, if you watch Animal Planet or, or, or uh, those uh, nature shows, you see that every, every animal has a specific task on earth. So, yeah, they're good for their job. Okay, let's go back to Timothy. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it, is be, uh, if it be received with thanksgiving. Read. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is sanctified. Those meat who are sanctified by the, by the word of God, you find that in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. It tells you all the food that are sanctified to eat. But the animals are good for their duties, for their jobs, okay? But you live in a, in a you, you, you attend a church that tells you eat your pork, eat whatever you want. That's not biblical, okay? Um, let's read this real quick. This is from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Let's read this real quick. The it's Zond about Mary. The Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Mary the Virgin. Distinctive Roman Catholic doctrines about Mary. You hear that? Distinctive Roman Catholic doctrine. So the unholy Roman Catholic Church brought about those doctrines. Read. Immaculate Conception. You're not reading the dates. I need the dates too. Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. 1854. 1854, they came up with the doctrine that Christ was immaculately born. 1854. So what was being taught prior to 1854? Stop right there. Let's go to, um, we're going to finish that, but uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to just give you one scripture on that topic. So to show what was being taught before 1854, uh, they say? Before 1854. Read. 16 and 17. The book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So it said it took on the seed of Abraham. He did not take the form of angels. Seed of Abraham, the sperm of Abraham. He came from the lineage of Abraham. Christ was born through uh, sexual contact between what? 
a man and a woman. It says it was made just like his brothers so he could understand everything that we were going through. So Christ was not immaculately born. Go back to the Bible dictionary. What's the next doctrine? An, an assumption of Mary. An assumption of Mary. That means what? Mary went up to heaven just like Christ? Mm. Can you show me that scripture? Can you show me that scripture that deified Mary that says, uh, matter of fact, give me Matthew, Matthew uh, 6. Because you go to the Cath uh, uh, unholy Roman Catholic Church, they have what? A prayer called Hail Mary, right? It's nowhere in the Bible. So let's see what the scripture says about prayer. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. Okay, like your, your priests tell you, uh, recite 27 Hail Marys uh, and, and, and do this much. No, do not use vain repetition like the heathen do. Those are not biblical. Those are customs of men. Read. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. You read. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father. No, Hail Mary, full of grace. Our Father. Our Father. That's what Christ told us to do. So, you are following the tradition of men. So, come out of the unholy Roman Catholic Church because they are teaching you tradition of men. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.